What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a stylized terrain and mountain asset pack for Blender that I think is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so I saw Terra Paint trending on the Blender market. So I reached out to Casey to see if he could send me a copy of it so I could check it out. So um, I'm, I'm always interested in asset packs like this um, and tools like this because they're like very specialized, but they allow you to create really cool things. And so in this case, the Stylized Terrain and Mountain Library is a collection from Casey Sheep that has a ton of different low poly and kind of like stylized assets for creating scenes like these um, directly inside of Blender. And so these are designed to be kind of like this stylized artistic piece and they're designed to be able to drop, be able to be dropped in the background and used as basically assets for creating these different scenes. And what I like about these is these are actually like three dimensional assets, right? Like there's a bunch of different tools for different looks. Um, so he's got all of these stylized rocks, things like that. So um, super cool from that standpoint um, because these are so like specialized. Um, he's also got some other tools that we can talk about as well, like his fog shaders. Um, he's got a little bit of forest generator in here that we can talk about as well. But um, there's three options for this tool. So there is the assets 100%, the 50%, and then the 10%. If you just wanted to try it out, I mean, at this price point, you might as well go for the 100% assets if you were going to do that. Um, but those are going to be your options. I will link to those on this page. So this is an affiliate link, meaning if you do purchase through the link, I do receive a commission. Um, so just always want to be upfront about that. Um, but yeah, let's jump over into Blender and talk about the way that this works and kind of what's and kind of what's contained inside of it. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to need to do when you download this is this is gonna come with two asset library files. You can kind of click into them and see what's in here, but what you wanna do is you wanna extract both of them and put them in the same folder, right? So these are now empty folders, there's nothing in them, but basically what I did is I extracted everything and I placed it all within a singular folder right here. I've labeled it assets Terra Paint. you could label it whatever you want, but notice how all the different like bog shaders and rock assets and all of that are now in one folder that I can reference in Blender. So then what you can do is you can jump into your preferences. So go into edit preferences right here. You wanna go into file paths and you wanna click on the plus button. You wanna go find that folder that you extracted those into. Now, one thing I usually recommend is make sure that you do set your import method to append rather than append reuse data. So if you edit these, you're not changing the stuff in your actual library. You're just appending your own copy to this folder. And so once you do that, you're gonna be able to see these in your asset browser. So again, remember, click the little drop down right here, pick asset browser, and you should see whatever folder you set as a drop down right here. Now, notice how as I go through this, there's a ton of assets in here um, for different styles. And so these are actually organized as well. So you can see like the badlands and the deserts and the grass mountains. You can see all of those in here. So they're nicely organized in, in a way where you can actually go find the different things, right? So the lava ones are pretty cool, for example. So we're gonna go ahead and delete out my default cube, zoom in. One thing to note about this, and I don't think this is a KC Sheep specific thing. In Blender 4.2, my shaders do take longer to compile just in general, um, which again, I think is more of a Blender thing than Casey's. Um, but if you look at this, this is designed to basically be used to create some kind of a terrain or a scene. Now, one thing I will note about these, and he says this on the sales page, these aren't really designed to be like ultra close up, right? Um, so these are designed to be used a little bit more as kind of like scene creation in the background. And so one cool thing about this, and we can come back to um, the asset library in a minute because there's a couple other things you need to know about. This does ship with example scenes and I've got a bunch of them open so that we can take a look at them. So probably my favorite is this one right here. So when you open this up, it's going to look like this, but he's basically showed you everything that he did in order to set up this scene, right? He's got all of the nodes set up, shaders set up, everything like that. Now what you can do is click on the plus button, add a layout workspace, and then you can go into the layout workspace to see how he's set this up. And this is pretty cool. So what he's done is he's come in here and he's just taken his different individual asset packs and he's kind of placed them 
together in order to create this scene. And so you can see exactly how he did it, how he placed everything, um, which I really love it when add-on developers do this, by the way, um, because you can actually kind of like reverse engineer the results they're getting instead of them just chucking it over the fence and being like, hey, check it out, it's an asset library. So um, I do appreciate it when they set this up. But you can see how they've got that one set up and there's five or six different example files. So he's got kind of this Badlands scene that he's set up with his Badlands assets. And again, this is definitely a very like stylized look, right? So it's for a very specific thing. Um, if you're not trying to create these kind of like stylized character things and other things like that, obviously you would want to use something else, but it's a great library of things that can help you set up scenes like this. And so here's another mountain scene that he set up. And again, he's he's kind of showing you the way that he set this up. So he's got his different fog shaders as well as his cloud shaders in here. Um, and they're all kind of stacked together in order to create that look and that scene. And so now let's just take a look back over in here. And again, just kind of go through um, a little bit of everything that he has in here. So he's got all of these different terrains, right? He's got like the grassy mountains that you can bring in. He's got the lava, he's got sandy mountains. So you can create a bunch of different scenes in here. Um, he's got snowy mountains, which are great for obviously snow scenes. Um, you can bring those in. And then what you can do is you can kind of like scale them up and drop them wherever you want, right? So if you wanted like a large mountain, so you could bring the snowy mountain in over here, kind of in the background and do what he's done, where he's kind of like, where he kind of like stacks them together with his camera view so that he can see that mountain in the background. You can scale it on the Z axis. You could adjust those different things. Now, he does also have a collection of both snowy rocks and regular rocks. Um, and so he's got different piles of rocks and other things like that, which again, can be really helpful. Right, so you can drag those in. Notice how those come in a little bit big and you would just have to bring those down, but you can use those in order to create some really interesting stuff. Now he does have some additional bonus items in here. Um, I don't know that I'd consider the clouds and something like this a bonus as much as just like something that you have, um, but he's got these clouds set up where you can bring them in and they're real simple and real light, right? You don't have to deal with like volumetrics or anything like that, but he's got these clouds set up um, where you can just bring them in in the background. So he's got kind of some puffy clouds and a little bit more detailed clouds in here as well. So again, like not super complicated, but for this kind of modeling, it doesn't really need to be. Now, he has two things that you are gonna to wanna to know about. The first is going to be the fog shader. All right, so the fog shader is actually interesting. Let's go ahead and let's drag, uh, what do we wanna do? Let's bring in one of the snowy mountains again, just cause those kind of make sense for the fog shader. So um, I just want one with a little more of like one mountain in here, which I think is exactly the same as this one, but that's okay. Um, so what's gonna happen here, and um, you can kind of see it here, you're gonna see it more in rendered mode right here, but I've got this mountain right here. Well, if you go into his bonus section under shaders, there's the fog shader. And this one's interesting because actually what it does is you're not actually using it to put fog in front of the object as much as you're dragging it onto an object's node setup right here. So basically we're gonna bring this fog shader in here like this, we're gonna adjust some things, really probably more having to do with the distance. But if you look at this, this is actually adding like a fog sheen to the object. So what it's doing is it's simulating the fog by applying a fog look or material. And you can adjust the color right here if you wanna do that. You know, you can make it grayer, you can make it not, but it's actually applying that to the object material right here. So if we were to just take that out, notice how this goes back to like the regular setup, but this makes it look a lot foggier. So if you combine that with the clouds, all right, let's bring a cloud in here. We'll do an R, Z, bring it down just a little bit. Um, and you can probably adjust the transparency of the cloud. So we'll bring our opacity down like this. But if you combine the cloud images with the fog shader, you can simulate fog using this like really lightweight, um, this really lightweight method because it's just adjusting the shader itself and you can adjust the strength up or down, things like that. So you can use this in order to create these scenes with fog and then kind of like dial in um, the colors really quickly, which is an interesting solution. I like how lightweight it is. 
And so another cool thing that he's got included is he's got his forest types. And so what you can do is you can drag in these forests. I'm gonna go ahead and scale this one down. I wanna make sure I only have the forest geometry node set up in here. But basically what that is, is that's a tool that places a forest of objects placed based on a series of points. So notice how if I move this over, this starts adding additional things in here. And so if we click in it and we take a look at it, right, we jump over here, it's basically a geometry node setup um, that's designed to place these objects on your scene. Now, the cool thing about this is this is set up with a shrink wrap, um, meaning that you can set it to target a surface like this one. So for example, if I move this up, I'm gonna tab in here and I'm going to move these over this and we can go ahead and move it back down but notice what it's doing is it's actually shrink wrapping those objects onto the surface right here so from that standpoint it's pretty cool in the sense that you can um, use it to place these on different surfaces like this notice how you can also adjust things like the scene you can adjust the density and scale of the objects that are being placed just like this now theoretically um, because all this is doing is it's placing this collection of forest type things in your scene you could definitely use this in order to um, basically customize or place custom things just by dropping them in that collection, right? So like for example, this is referencing forest type 01 right here. So if I was to take that forest type 01 collection and say I was to drop a rock into it. So we're just gonna drop rock into our scene. Definitely gonna wanna scale that down like this. So I'll make it a lot smaller. Right here, make sure we apply our rotation and scale to that object. But now, because that object is within the scene, we need to scale it up a little bit more. There we go. But it's basically placing those rocks in addition to um, the forest that's in here as well. So, and I will say this is pretty simple. Like for example, if I was to take a forest and we'll drag in one with the, let's go into our bonuses. We'll drag this forest type one onto the surface. We're gonna bring it down. Whoops, again, we just want the geometry node set up. So I'm gonna move this over like this. And let's say that we were to shrink wrap this onto that surface. So we're just gonna pick that surface right here. And actually it does a pretty good job. So one thing you do wanna do is you wanna make sure when you bring this in that you bring it in on a flat surface um, so that those sample objects are coming in flat and vertical like this. But if I was to tab in here, adjust this right here, like this, notice how it's taking those trees and it's placing them on the surface. And you can adjust like if it does a little bit of an offset, just using that shrink wrap modifier in here. So from that standpoint, from creating like the low poly stuff in here, this is actually a pretty cool tool. All right, so that should give you an idea of how to use this. A, kind of a niche tool, but I did think it was pretty cool. And it's a really big collection of this these stylized assets. So leave a comment below. Let me know if you'd ever use something like this or if you have any questions. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.